Hey, what's going on? Joe Coffey here for PremierGuitar.com. We're in Petaluma, California at the one and only Mesa Boogie Factory. This is where it all happens. I've got T.N. Lawrence with me here. T.N., how you doing? Nice to see you, Joe. T.N. knows a thing or two about amps, as you could imagine. He does a lot here, including artist relations. But one thing he's going to do is take us into one of the coolest rooms on the planet if you're into amp building. This is where a lot of magic has happened. What, what are we going to here? This is the fitting start of the tour. This is... Um Randy's workshop uh, where he will meter the amplifiers and put them on scopes and, and do voltage checks and, and that kind of thing. So Cool, let's check it out. Wow, okay, so as I'm stepping over Lone Star and dual rectifier prototype chassis, I mean, look at this, everything, everywhere you look, there's, there's a, a prototype amp. Uh, you know, explain to me, what are we looking at here? This is... Uh, this is where various revisions and wayward prototype amplifiers come to rest. Um, if Randy was here, he would tell you that he straightened up the place just for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, there are various revisions that take place as an amplifier is being designed. And so a lot of them end up here, whereas an amp has been laid out initially played through, tweaked, toned, as we like to call it, and then it will uh, basically become another revision that the changes that they make on the very first product will turn into another amplifier, and uh, they'll, they'll make all of those various changes. And at that point, the, the first or previous amplifier becomes a reference to compare to the new ones, but the new amp will incorporate all of the changes that are done in the toning process. So you'll see some visual examples of that. There are many ways to skin a cat. I guess you could have a clinical, clean, dust-free approach where everything is kind of like nicely stacked. But, you know, this is very different. You know, you see a lot of the same elements. You've got the scope, the distortion analyzer and everything, the big soldering irons. But, I mean, I just get, I get the feeling there's a certain vibe that gets cranked up a few notches when he's in here and he's working on something that will be the next rollout Mesa product. Well, ironically, I think the dust that's in here is because tone is calling, and there's not enough time to work with the duster. There's, uh, and it's, it's ironic what you say, because ultimately the, the most intense work takes place upstairs in the tone lounge, which I'm sure you'll see later, but that's where Doug and Randy uh, will play through the amplifiers and make the tweaks of the circuit and all of that, whereas when he comes down here, he's got the amplifier on the bench, running through the scope, running through the meters, and, and testing certain voltages. You can see the little cab here. He'll run the amp into this cab so that he can listen for noises, hum, uh, any, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so this room is, is kind of unique. Uh, it is where some of the magic happens, but I'd say for any of the of viewers and listeners that it, it might be more obvious that magic is taking place upstairs in the tone lounge, but... Uh, you know, this is a, a great place of uh, resting place of a bunch of history of previous designs and ultimately future designs as well. A great reference point is uh, this is the first prototype of the dual rectifier. Wow. There's a rectifier tube here. There's a rectifier tube underneath that you kind of can't necessarily see. Uh, and then, of course, you see right next to it what was ultimately the first uh, straight uh, front panel chassis for dual rectifiers, whereas this obviously uh, looks very similar to a Mark IV chassis, which is uh, kind of what that was initially in those days when the rectifier series was being designed in 1991, 92, something like that. So. In that process, I mean, we're not talking about like a nerd with short sleeves and a tie-on doing, doing like the engineering thing. I mean, he's kind of like Dale Chihuly, right? He puts on the music, gets into the vibe, you know, there's a certain mystique about the whole thing, but it, apparently it's true. Well, this is Randy's art form. This process to him is like Chihuly's glassworks. It's like uh, master paintings. Um, this is this is Randy's art, and he will again tell you that after 38 years of doing it, this is uh, something that he's just starting to get good at. Wow. And it's important to point out, too, that Randy doesn't, use CAD, has never used CAD, he does all of his layout with mylar film and different widths of tape and, and you can look closely at the circuit boards and you can see that there's sort of a curved nature to the connection of the traces and that's Randy running the tape and connecting the traces and the terminals on the board and, and doing it. It's, it's a, it's a 
old school way of doing it, but again, it's it's Randy's way and it's what he's good at and what he knows intimately well. And so that's just one of the aspects of the art that he puts into this process. All right, Gene, what are we looking at here? Well, this is the next step after the uh, amplifier prototype resting place that we were just at. Um, this is one of Randy's paintings, so to speak. This is uh, an example of uh, where he spends a great deal of time uh, dialing in the circuits as the result of that hard work. Uh, the circuit board is where it all happens. Um, this is for a rectifier? This is actually a uh, dual or triple rectifier circuit board. Randy would tell you that all maces have been uh, have always been made with circuit boards. We've we've never made point to point amps per se. Randy did repairs for years before starting Mesa Boogie, and he came to some very strong conclusions about the the benefits of point to point wiring and places where point to point can be applied in circuit board design amps, but. Our use of circuit boards uh, provides a pretty remarkable amount of consistency as well as the fact that it basically facilitates the vast amount of features and options and modes and different things that ultimately Mesa Boogies are, are known for. And that's important to point out. A lot of people, they think, well, it's all about point to point. That's the only way to go, the best possible you know, quality, but uh, that's not necessarily so. I always say point to point does not a great amplifier make. Um, you can make as great an amplifier with a circuit board, uh, but you certainly could not fit the, the vast array of features and options and, and modes and different possibilities that ultimately uh, Randy is so driven to create in an amp that's point-to-point -point wired. You just can't fit all of that hand wiring stuff into the kinds of packages that we create where you have a road king uh, and you have all of those features. Uh, to do that via point-to-point, -point, you'd have an amp that would probably be about five feet long and about three feet high. So, so it's one of the other elements that causes us to maintain the circuit board design. But beyond that, uh, there's a great confidence here that we enjoy a pretty remarkable consistency from amp to amp because of circuit board design, which leads us to the point of the quality of circuit board that is used in the process. A lot Let's of take a close look. A lot of manufacturers will use a single-sided circuit board, and what that does is it only leaves for the connecting point where the component makes, uh, makes a connection to the trace as the f little foil piece on top of the circuit board. So we do two things. Number one, out of necessity, we have what's called plated through, where you can see all of the little eyelets that connect through. There's an actual metal eyelet that goes all the way through the board, and the purpose of that is twofold. Number one, it connects connections from the top to the bottom side of the board. And we need that real estate to be able to make all of the connections of all of the components that run all of these vast features and modes and options. Um, secondarily, though, it makes it so that the component, as its leg goes through the terminal, is not just connecting to the foil trace on one side of the board. It's actually connected to the metal terminal that's connected all the way through. You have a, a, a much greater surface area where the component connects. Let's check it out on the light table. You can really see the detail on, on both sides, see where everything's going. You can see how certain traces on the bottom side of the board connect to traces on the top side of the board. And another point that we wanted to make with regard to Randy's artistic approach to this process uh, that we talked about earlier, you can see that these lines are curved. This is Randy running different thicknesses of various tapes that make the connection. And, and this is a part of, of his art. This is a part of uh, what he sees as, uh, as uh, the, the, the creative process. We've also got a transparency here, which is sort of a reverse negative transparency, which is some of what he works on as he lays the stuff out and, and ultimately creates traces. And you can see the curved nature, whereas in sort of CAD drawings or electronic approaches, uh, you'll get a lot of 90s and 45s and 22 degree angles that are made to connect all of the different points on the circuit board. And, and uh, so, I don't know, this to me kind of represents some, some angular flow. It's very cool. I mean, even at a glance, I mean, you could tell before you even try to focus on what parts are being used, you can look at that and say, oh, that's a Mesa. You could. 